Hey guys, I want to show you something extremely useful for all of you because you are all uh, more or less on beginners, medium level and you uh, most of the times and in most of your games just face E4, E5. And I believe from my pretty rich coaching experience that one of the best openings with a white pieces against e5 is catch defense. And here, uh, within the next 10 minutes, I'm just here to show you how should you punish uh, one of the most common mistakes against the scotch defense by black players and six, uh, basically six, this is, uh, this is the way you count six, uh, six most common mistakes and how can you take advantage of those. So once again, for all of you who are medium level guys, that's first thing. For all of you who play scotch defense, for all of you who play uh, bullet, blitz and rapid chess, for all of you who just play against lower rated guys and medium level guys, simply against the guys who don't know the theory, let me just show you how do you play when they make one of the most common mistakes and take on d4. So let's go. So they take on d4, believe it or not, it's the third most common move against the scotch defense. First and second place are, of course, for bishop c5, one of the main moves, and knight f6, absolutely the most common against the scotch defense. 9,000 games in the database I found with the knight takes d4. It's logical. For some reason, when I uh, taught my students, uh, these younger kids, my son who also plays against lower rated guys most of the times uh, i just realized that when on 94 80 percent of the games on that level uh his opponents used to take on d4 so when they play knight takes d4 you gotta take by quinn uh what's so special about this one well your queen is now well centralized in the center which is a good thing but from another point of view you just have to keep in mind that queen on d4 can no longer be under the attack by the knight on c6. And that's one of the most important things here. So this queen on d4 does a great job being placed in the center. Let's go. Mistake number one. They go with the knight f6. I found, believe it or not, almost 2000 games with this typical mistake. It happens so often. And basically, if we have 9,000 games in the 94, and if we have 2,000 games like this, it actually means every fourth game, if you play the scotch defense, will be played against stupid knight f6. So what do we play? Just e5. Kick the knight away, take the center, and now they have to play either knight g8 or queen e7. Those who play queen e7, they may mix it up with one of the main lines of the scotch defense, knight f6 and d5, but it's not pliable here so you just go with bishop e3 no more pin no more pin your king is safe and now the knight on f6 is under the threat they gotta move the knight otherwise you're just threatening to take on f6 and then you play knight c3 threatening to jump on d5 and going after the queen on e7 when you play uh, knight, uh, knight uh, c3 threatening knight d5 they gotta go c6 to stop that and now maybe they've just stopped that but from another point of view just make castle here i'm not gonna go deeper than this you're already according to this modern engines plus two are completely winning why you got a great opening development uh, advantage you have two minor pieces being developed queen being centralized and cannot be simply kicked away with any of the black pieces you have uh, your king in safety uh, by making long castle. You have possession of the D file. And in case you just want to go with some sort of like most active approaches by white, you should be pushing your pawn to F4. Uh, you just have to play bishop E2 and go with a rook H to E1, placing your rook on the E file and going after the queen on E7 and king on E8. What a nice development what a nice position and practically all games in the database white won from this position in the case of e5 knight g8 you just go with bishop c4 and for example when i was younger i remember a couple of guys saw my queen here on d4 and they played b6 then i just played a queen d5 threatening mate and threatening rook that's how i won a couple of guys in the miniatures when i was younger uh, of course they gotta go d6 and you just play knight c3 once again 
three developed pieces centralized queen two minor pieces possibility to develop uh, to play castle or to play bishop f4 followed by long castle gives you almost uh, winning position uh, great opening advantage uh, great development advantage and here they just have so many problems and what is close to be winning according to the engines it's considered to be plus two for white mistake number two 1000 games i found with c5 c5 is a terrible positional move uh, because it just um, creates a weak square on d5 afterwards and for the rest of the game so you just got a great outpost on d5 and on top of all that uh, for the rest of the game they're just going to have this backward pawn on d7 you just bring the queen back to d3 play knight c3 and a very simple plan and approach you play bishop f4 you go with the queen on d3 afterwards when you play long castle uh, you're, you're just gonna go after the d6 pawn and you should easily be completely winning i found so many games like this and white won uh, like 93 percent of these games queen f6 i remember when i played a couple of simuls for example i played a simul against the uh, against the soldiers in in an army and uh, three games went with the queen f6 believe it or not this is mistake number three and i found uh 1200 games uh with queen f6 what do you do you just have to kick this queen away with tempo and you play e5 and when they go queen b6 now you take now you take because you create a double pawns also uh, consider this pawn on e5 being a great piece because it just stops knight f6 and at the same time they have problems with the light square bishop you go knight c3 threatening both knight b5 and knight d5 they gotta go c6 you play bishop e3 threatening pawn on b6 they go b5 and you play special move along castle i remember i wasn't so sure should i be sacking this pawn uh, because they play b4 94 your knight goes towards the center and take takes control of the dark squares and when they take absolutely don't panic they go rook a5 they even want to take the second pawn you play f4 practically position like this is dead winning for white because you have absolute development you have defile possession they have locked light square bishop they have problems with the knight here they can never jump on e7 because of knight d6 they have problems with the bishop on f8 as well because it cannot go to any e7 or c5 squares they have problems uh, also with the rook on h8 because uh, they just have problems altogether with both of these minor pieces knight g8 uh, and bishop f8 so even the rook on h8 is suffering and position like this is so much I, I'm, I'm willing to say so much better but engine says plus three plus three is like being three pawns up and you're even pawned down in this position then uh, mistake number four i found 500 games with b6 here you just develop your knight and nobody knows the following refutation i remember when i learned it i was so happy and a couple of my students won their games very easy with the following move boom knight b5 they can't move the queen because of knight c7 you threaten queen e5 followed by knight c7 you threaten bishop f4 threatening uh, c7 pawn as well and they're just completely lost for example they can't move the bishop you take on g7 they can't move the knight you just give check followed by knight c7 uh, they can't move uh, anything else because this is just like completely completely uh, winning position for for you and uh, finally mistake number five 500 games i found with 97 makes sense they would like to bring this knight to c6 to harass the queen on d4 you go bishop dt that's a specialty bishop d2 because once they play knight c6 now when you play queen e3 they can develop the dark square bishop to c5 or b4 i mean they can do it on b4 but it would be waste of time so they go bishop e7 knight c3 castles and the specialty is h4 plan should be move, play the long castle move your queen um up to the king side to g3 support h4 and h5 and h6 go with the bishop h6 go and try to get rid of the dark square bishop by playing knight e5 and you just have an amazing game in this position as well and finally 
biggest number of games that I found here and practically it's the only let's just say playable type of position and move by black I found almost 4,000 games with d6 d6 makes sense they just prepared to play knight f6 so you won't be able to play e5 and here I won't give you like so many things but I'm just gonna give you an easy plan to get a huge advantage and to have a possibility to attack and then you'll come back with a with your you know like feedback and to tell me uh did you have a good experience with the analysis that i just gave you so you go knight c3 knight f6 bishop f4 i like this bishop f4 because bishop on e3 could be under the attack at some point by knight g4 bishop on g5 is okay famous slovenian scotch player pavasovic uh, i mean slovenian guy but uh, playing the scotch opening uh played bishop g5 and won relatively a nice game with it but i still prefer bishop f4 it creates pressure on d6 it stops any c5 for the rest of the game sometimes it even supports e5 but more importantly it doesn't give them any knight g4 when the bishop stands in a3 so when they go bishop e7 you go long castle short castle and the most important thing like english type of attack and this is a uh, philidor type of the game uh, that we covered at some point in the beginning of uh, this channel so you just have to go on the bottom of all the videos and to find how to play philidor like mama jarv nigel short and these guys so you go f3 you go g4 and you go h4 it's a famous english attack and all you have to do is just push these pawns like crazy when they go bishop f6 that's why they played knight d7 you go queen d2 you go g5 and you don't have to be magnus carlsen to play these positions just move your queen back to g3 play f4 play h5 go with g6 and you would eventually or you should eventually break on the king's side and win the game i remember playing one game like this 95 you just go with the queen g3 and no one can stop f4 followed by h5 and g6 hopefully you're gonna find the following video very useful and i'm just expecting uh, your uh, answers experiences and of course if you have any doubts or questions let me know that's why i'm here thanks so much and subscribe on the channel bye bye <music>